Can Manchester United break into the Premier League top four or will Chelsea and Leicester City close that door? Let's talk about that. Hey everyone, it is Vinny and that is FY Dublin. I hope you guys are all doing super, super well and welcome back to another Premier League match week prediction video where I will be predicting every single fixture this match week and it is going to be match week 33 of the Premier League. This is going to be by far one of my most competitive match week predictions just in terms of the teams that are in this playing against each other. There are lots of results that really could go either way and naturally it just is more competitive because we are getting towards the end of the season there's very little room for error and teams really cannot afford to lose except for liverpool so please do put down in the comment section down below the team you support along with your prediction for your team's game. Now before I get into the predictions I just want to say thank you for all the support on this channel recently. It has been insane and I have been talking in my recent videos about me taking YouTube more seriously. I do want to start uploading on a more consistent basis because I absolutely love everything about YouTube. I really do enjoy making videos and I love talking to you guys in the comment section down below. You guys really are awesome and I do want to make this my career one day and the only way to make that possible is to get to a thousand subscribers eventually so please if you are not subscribed do subscribe to this channel or share it with your friends i really would appreciate that and follow fincross football on instagram because that really does help my channel grow as well otherwise guys i hope you do enjoy the video and i do appreciate every single one of you thank you the first prediction I have for you guys is going to be Norwich City versus Brighton. Now, I am leaning more Brighton's way in this because if you look at the likes of Norwich City, they have just lost 4-0 to one of the worst Arsenal teams in the Premier League era. Yes, Arsenal is a big club. It's still got some really good players in this team, but they have underperformed this season. So for Norwich to lose 4-0 to them is really, really embarrassing. And they have only scored one goal in their past eight Premier League games. Which Disgusting! Which is really, really embarrassing for them. And their main striker, their main striker, Timu Puki, has not scored a goal from open play in six months. I mean, Timu Puki is like a banana that's been left out for too long and turned brown. It was once really, really good, but I wouldn't take it anymore. Therefore, guys, I am going to give Brighton the win in this. I will give Brighton a 2 0 win in this prediction because looking at the likes of Brighton, they've actually looked pretty good since they've come back. And as I said, Norwich not scoring a lot, but on Brighton's day, defensively, they can be very, very good. So I think they're absolutely just going to shut Norwich down completely. Since they've been back, they got a draw against Leicester, which is a very good result for them. They got a win over Arsenal, which is a huge win for Brighton. And I think they are doing very, very well. Yes, they did get a 3-0 loss. To Manchester United but to be honest I just think Manchester United are in very very good form at the moment so I wouldn't say that is an accurate representation of this Brighton team the next game is going to be between Leicester City and Crystal Palace now Crystal Palace on their day can look very very good and Leicester City since they've come back have not looked strong at all but I really do back Leicester City's ability and if they want to stay in the top four they really do have to pick up on form because currently Manchester United in fifth are currently three points away from Leicester City. I mean, Leicester City, the only team at a stage in this Premier League season who looked like they could actually catch up to Liverpool, now have potential to fall out of the top four, which is absolutely insane. They have not looked strong since they have come back, but yet I'm still going to give them a really big 3-0 win over Crystal Palace. And I am saying that purely just because I don't think Crystal Palace provide enough chances up forward for IU. Otherwise, I really would back Crystal Palace's ability. But until they create those chances, I am going for Leicester City. Purely because if you look at their defense, I think their defense is too good for Crystal Palace. I think Soyuncu has really stepped up this season since he's replaced Harry Maguire at Leicester City. Schmeichel, very good in goal. Of course, you get Chilwell. I do think just Leicester City are the better team. They just do have to pick up on form. But since they've been back, they have not looked that strong. I mean, they lost to Everton, which, yes, Yes, I guess that is kind of a close game, but I mean, to draw against Watford and then to draw against Brighton, Leicester City really do have to pick up on form. Their form over the last few years since they won the Premier League season has really just gone up and down. It's like that ugly girl in school who really had a glow up when she left, but then she started to age a bit. So she got plastic surgery to look good again. But then when she aged, the plastic surgery didn't work out too well. Now, Finn, was that an analogy that made sense? Nope. Am I sticking with it? Most definitely. Manchester United versus Bournemouth is next. Now, Manchester United have been in fire form lately. I really do back their ability. Therefore, I will give them a very comfortable three win over this Bournemouth team. Purely because if you look all over the pitch, players are starting to perform for Manchester United. Matic is finally stepping up and performing. Pogba and Bruno Fernandes is just a dream. De Gea finally had some great saves versus Brighton. I really do back Manchester United's ability. I mean... 
for a team that was like ninth or 10th in the beginning of this Premier League season where Manchester United were in bad form, to now be three points off of third in the Premier League table, United have really stepped up. And in terms of Bournemouth, I mean, I have to give them a big 3-0 loss. Purely because, I mean, look, they just got rid of Ryan Fraser, which, yes, Eddie Howe, I get it. You want to focus on the players that want to stay at your club. But, I mean, you can't afford to lose big players like that, especially not for free. Yes, you have gotten some very close results this Premier League season here and there. But at the end of the day, it's like if you fail a test and you tell your parents, you know what, I just failed by 5%. I was really, really close. But you still failed. Do I know that from experience? A huge game is next in the lights of Wolverhampton Wanderers versus Arsenal. Now, looking at this fixture as a whole, Wolves have only beaten Arsenal once in the last 10 games between these two teams. So, you know what? You would say the favour wouldn't really go for Wolves. But you know what? I am going to give Wolves a 2-1 win over Arsenal. But looking at Arsenal, yes, there are some promising things for them, like Aubameyang just got his 50th Premier League goal for Arsenal, which, yes, is a very, very good thing. They just got a huge win over Norwich. But Norwich is in a very good team, so I still don't back Arsenal in this fixture. Looking at the likes of Wolves, I mean, at the time of recording, they are unbeaten in their last eight Premier League games. Although they can get unnecessary draws, so I mean, this could potentially end as a draw. But I'm just thinking of the fire form that the attack of Wolves have been in. I mean, can you just imagine Adama Traore going against Mustafi in defence for Arsenal? It's not going to end well. Chelsea versus Watford is next. Now, I do want to give Chelsea a very comfortable win in this. Or at least I hope so. I still am going to. But I'm very doubtful after seeing their performance versus West Ham. I mean, Chelsea, what happened to you? You need to just get these new players in and, putting the, and put them into your starting lineup ASAP. That was absolutely horrible versus West Ham. But you know what? I will back their ability versus the likes of Watford. I think that they could potentially get a pretty comfortable 3-0 win. I do think it is definitely possible. Otherwise, they really are looking to lose their top four place, which would be a huge shame for them. But defensively, they have been really, really bad this Premier League season. Although they beat the likes of Manchester City, they have only managed six clean sheets this Premier League season, which isn't good. They really do have to start picking up on that. And looking at Watford, I do think that they will lose. Yes, I do think Chelsea could get a 3-0 win. But looking at the likes of Watford, they've only gotten six wins this Premier League season. I don't know who's going to score for them because they really haven't got good scorers in their team anymore. But out of their six wins, I mean, it is possible that they could beat Chelsea because three of those wins have been against teams like Manchester United, Wolves, and yes, Liverpool. Burnley versus Sheffield United is next. Now, I think this could potentially be an extremely close fixture because I think these two teams are very, very similar. Now, looking at both of them, I would say both of their biggest strengths has to be in defence. I think that's where most of their success has come from this season is the fact that their defence has been very, very good and they've both been backed by very, very good goalkeepers. But you know what? I think I will lean Burnley's way in this one. I will give Burnley a slight 1-0 win over Sheffield United. Initially, I did start off in Sheffield United's favour, but to be 100% honest, since football has returned, Sheffield United have really struggled to hit form. They have really struggled to start picking up on wins and gaining momentum, so I will go for Burnley on this one. And at the end of the day, Burnley, unlike Sheffield United, I do think has more strength all around the pitch, where I do find that almost all of Sheffield United's strength has been in defence. Newcastle United versus West Ham is next, which, I mean, this is a very scary result for me to predict because this one really could go either way. I mean, guys, I've got my predictions in front of me. Look how indecisive I've been. I keep on changing the results because just something new happens absolutely every day. Initially, I had Newcastle winning this 2-1, but I think after that performance versus Chelsea, I can potentially see West Ham getting a 2-1 win over Newcastle. Yes, Newcastle have really definitely been on form. They recently got that big... 4-1 win over the likes of Bournemouth. They got three goals by Sheffield United a few weeks ago. I think Newcastle has a lot of potential behind them. But as I said, without a real striker, I do see them potentially struggling. Where West Ham, I think, are better in form just all around the pitch. I think Declan Rice is looking very, very good. I've seen some great saves from Fabianski in goal. And Lanzini, when he does play, looks very, very good for the likes of West Ham. I do think Anderson has to start picking up on form, though. But yeah, this is another game that really could go either way. But I am leaning slightly more towards West Ham for this one. 
Liverpool versus Aston Villa is next. Now, you know what? This is just... I, I don't know how much time to spend on this prediction. 1-0 Liverpool. There we go. Liverpool's going to win regardless. The only reason I am only putting a 1-0 win for it is because... Look, Liverpool have won the Premier League. I think that they're going to give lots of the youngsters a chance. They're just going to give everyone a chance. I think Liverpool are still going to win, obviously. But I think they're going to have more fun playing. I think they're going to try new tactics. I think they're just going to do whatever. There's a lot less stress on them. Unless Klopp really says, you know what, we have won, but it's not over. Let's see how good we can do or how many points we can get. Whatever. But at the end of the day, look, no matter how much fun or how many youngsters Liverpool's on the pitch... I mean, Aston Villa haven't won a game in the Premier League since the 1st of February. I think it's going Liverpool's way either way. Second last game, which by the way, once again, if you are enjoying these predictions, please do subscribe to this channel. It does help me out quite a lot. It is going to be Southampton versus the likes of Manchester City. Now I am going to put it down as a 3-1 away win for Manchester City. I think Pep Guardiola's team still has so much to prove and they really will be fighting just dignity-wise towards the end of the season. I think they will get a good result and I think Danny Ings could potentially score against the likes of Manchester City purely because Danny Ings for Southampton is just looking so good and so informed. 18 Premier League goals for the Southampton striker. I mean, that is very good overall, but I don't see Southampton winning because past Ings, I don't see anyone else fighting in the same manner as Ings will, where Manchester City, as I said, dignity-wise, they will want to pick up on form. They have not had the best season overall, but at the same time, they have actually only lost to, like, top six opposition in the Premier League, or at least top teams in the Premier League this season plus Norwich. The final prediction is going to be Spurs versus Everton. Now this is going to be another very, very close one, but I am going to give it Spurs way. I think that it could go 3-2 towards Spurs because if you look at the last 10 fixtures between these two teams, I mean, Spurs have won five and the other five have been draws. Everton have not won any games in the last 10 fixtures between these two teams and I don't think that'll change necessarily here. I mean, it is possible of course Everton just beat Leicester but I do think that Spurs will do it because on their day when all their players are in form Spurs can look very very strong now that Hugo Lloris is officially back he's looked very very good in goal although I do think that he could potentially concede because I do think that the defense have to sort them out quite a bit Bergwin looks very very good on the wing and Harry Kane hopefully can pick up on form so I do think this will go in Spurs' favor so guys I hope you have enjoyed those Premier League predictions once again if you have enjoyed please do subscribe to this channel I would really really appreciate it there is my FIFA 20 career mode series for RB Leipzig please go check that out it would help me out so much and there is a video YouTube has recommended for you I do appreciate every single one of you please do subscribe if you did enjoy and tell me your predictions down below this has been Finn FYW and I do love every single one of you stay awesome Cheers.